Melinda May can save me anytime. Hey guys, YG here with another review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, this was a very solid episode, sort of like last week's episode. Uh, very good. The show is actually probably, I think, like, we've had two consecutive solid episodes now. I think this is probably what we're going to see going forward from this show. Just very solid. I, I think they're finally getting the tone that they want to. They're finally, the jokes are hitting, the timing's better, the actors have a much better rapport. But without further ado, let's just jump into it. On the face of it, this is a simple... Yet interesting concept for an episode. Uh, the team gets stuck in an unwanted situation with somebody tracking their every move. Uh, they're powerless and have to rely on each other to get out of it. We've seen it before. Uh, Firefly has a good example in the final episode with Jubal early that assassin tracking them. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. puts its own unique Marvel spin on it, and we ended up with an extremely, extremely good episode. This time we follow the team as they track down a safety inspector with apparent telekinetic powers. As it turned out, she was being haunted by, you know, a ghost person. She thought she was being punished by God with demons, but it turned out just to be uh, Tobias, a member working on this particle accelerator that had, you know, been absorbed and accidentally thrown into another planet or another dimension. Uh, and that, truthfully to me, was a much better, more interesting storyline than before. Seriously, if it was just going to be a shitty ghost story, just cancel it. Cancel it now. Uh, it's avoided the TV tropes and gave us something that was a very positive spin on really an outdone, you know, an overdone idea. But seriously, we got a far better explanation. It turns out that the particle accelerator opened up a portal to another planet, slash dimension, slash hell, slash Syria, slash DC headquarters. Um, it had absorbed him uh, and gave him the ability to appear and disappear from our world. Yes, it was him who was haunting the safety inspector, but the team sorted things out and Sky actually discerned what he was trying to do. He had a crush on her, he tried to talk to her, and he was trying to protect her. A little bit of a little hackneyed ending. The show has so far gone for that whole TV, you know, everything ends happy. It's gone that route, and it hasn't, you know, really done anything truly original, which could be expected for an ABC show. Network is not always that good. The exception is Hannibal. And it was May who eventually soothed the beast into, you know, vanishing. But it was a very intense episode in some points, but I kind of never felt like the team was really in danger. You knew they were going to pull through, they've got 22 episodes to go, but it didn't have the same heart-stopping effect that, you know, FCZT did. Now into pros and cons. Pro, yay for continuing storyline. We actually got more into why Melinda May is called the Cavalry. We got, you know, varying different spins on the tail, and I thought that was a very good you know, way to show that the tale has sort of grown in proportion. That's just how great it is. It turns out she was she was just sent in to resolve a situation, but that got blown out of proportion by Ward and, you know, Fitzsimmons and before Coulson set things straight. It turns out Coulson was there, which was kind of cool. And Clark Gregg delivered a great emotional performance again. Uh, we also got to see more of the Index, which will probably play a bigger part in the show than was originally in, uh, explained. Uh, and we also got to see more of the May and Ward affair. Turns out it was less of a, you know, one-night stand in the White House and more of a, you know, Tiger Woods affair. That was actually my favorite scene featuring Agent Ward was the very beginning scene where he was, he and May were trying to figure out how they would, you know, get back to the plane without anybody knowing that they were. But, anyways. I also love the brilliant explanation of how Tobias was the ghost. And on a more side note sort of thing rather than a pro. In this one episode, we got more references to Thor the Dark World than we did in that entire last episode that was supposedly based on Thor the Dark World. Also, the prank side story was a really, really nice touch, and that really displayed the subtlety that I was talking about uh, and the mastery of the tone that it really wants now. Overall, this episode just had the right amount of the little things, the little subtle intangibles that'll make a Marvel show really, or a Marvel movie, a Marvel project, I guess I can say now that they're on TV. They, they showed... That sort of, you know, mastery of the little things, the subtlety that makes a Marvel movie so great. I mean, we don't want to be hit in the head with a hammer. So Arrow is sort of guilty of that in many ways, you know, losing the subtlety. This didn't try, to, try too hard to fail. It actually captured some of the magic, uh, and it's really finding its ground. Cons? Not many. Again, this was a very solid episode. Um, it's sort of like the last episode. It just didn't have the emotional drama, some of the you know, intense connection. Like, it didn't do the thing that an episode of Breaking Bad would do or Hannibal would do. Because with great shows, you forget that you're watching a show. You get so sucked into it. You just get absorbed. It's like dining. It's like you're being there. You actually feel that the characters are in danger. And this one, we didn't see that. And in the last one, we didn't see that. 
you knew they were going to resolve it. And maybe that's flat villains. Maybe that's bad writing. Maybe just poor writing because the writing was actually okay. But it just hasn't, like, except for a couple episodes so far, like FCZT, I Spy, those were brilliantly written. I felt like I was watching a Bourne movie. You forget you're watching a TV show. This show actually succeeds very well. I mean, you, you're aware of the fact that you're watching a Marvel TV. It doesn't just draw you in and connect you like, you know, say a Breaking Bad. Say, so this, I mean, but that's what we expected. It's to be expected. This isn't going to be like the best show ever. It's not going to be The Wire or Breaking Bad. It's not going to really be a Marvel movie, but it is a Marvel TV project. For that, it's good. It's very good for what we're seeing for, for you know, Marvel starting out in TV. And it's good that it's finding its footing, finally. I'd like to point out that I gave this a good overall review. I'm not bashing it, I'm just pointing out my opinion on what you know needs to be done to make it a better show. I realize we're not going to see Breaking Bad or Hannibal, or maybe even Firefly. Firefly is a more realistic goal. But this isn't perfect, and I hope my review reflects that. So as such, I'm going to give this an 8.75 out of 10. Now I know you're kind of like, why is he going into the quarters when I just give it a 9? I feel like a 9 is that standard of excellence that is a little bit above it. That, you know, pulls you in like I was talking about. But it's higher than the last episode because it did do more intangible things right. MVP of this episode... Who would be the MVP? MVP of this episode, Melinda May, for her wonderful day-saving abilities. Can you believe she is still that fine at 50? Happy birthday to her. It was actually, like, this week or last week or something like that. I think it was a couple weeks ago. Maybe not. I don't know. Happy birthday. Love you. That's it for this review. Um, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to get access to all of our content. Signing off, this is White Sheep. See you next time.